If you run an e-commerce business or you're a marketing manager, this is the only glossary you're gonna need to measure success and metrics. Whether you're scaling, optimizing, or actually just getting started and you're in college. These 21 metrics will keep you on track to build a thriving, profitable e-commerce business. Hey everyone, I'm Leighton Penrose and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button uh, for weekly e-commerce growth tips. Today, I'm gonna be walking through 21 metrics that will help you measure profitability and growth for a Shopify store. And trust me, this, this is everything that you need to never have to guess which numbers matter the most again. Plus, I'm gonna share my two favorite metrics that I think are real game changers for e-commerce businesses. So uh, we'll be breaking down this into uh, three categories, the so basic, intermediate and advanced metrics so yeah ready let's go so number one is your aov your average order value it's simple aov is the average amount of customer spends per order so to calculate it take your total revenue and divide it by the number of orders that you're getting so uh, increasing your aov is a quick win for most businesses to increase revenue so if your total sales for the month are a hundred thousand and you've processed two thousand orders your aov is fifty dollars number two conversion rate this is the percentage of visitors who actually buy something so you calculate this by taking the number of sales divided by the number of visitors and then multiply it by 100. So if you had 1,000 visitors to your site and you made 50 sales, your conversion rate would be 5%. Number three, customer acquisition cost. It's basically how much you spend to acquire a new customer. So you calculate this by dividing your total marketing spend by the number of new customers you gained during a period. So for example, if you spend $10,000 on ads, Facebook, Google, TikTok, and you got 500 new customers, your CAC or your cost of acquisition is $20. So number four is your refund rate. So your refund rate measures the percentage of sales that were refunded. Take the refunded sales, divide it by your total sales and multiply it by 100. So if you refunded $1,000 worth of products out of a $50,000 in total sales, your refund rate is 2%. Number five, card abandonment rate. The card abandonment rate shows the percentage of customers who added something to the cart but didn't complete the purchase. So to calculate it, divide the number of abandoned carts by the total number of carts and then multiply it by 100. So if 200 customers out of 1,000 didn't complete checkout, your abandonment rate is 20%. Six, your bounce rate. So your bounce rate is the percentage of visitors who leave your site after viewing just one page. So you take the number of single page visits divided by the total number of visits and multiply it by 100. So if 300 visitors out of 1,000 leave after seeing only one page, your bounce rate is 30%. Time on page. Time on page measures how long people stay on a specific page. So this is more about engagement. And while there's no uh, formula for it, the goal is to just keep people to stay on your site longer you know one two three four five minutes so they're kind of all of the basic metrics to cover a lot of them you'll see on your google analytics or on your shopify dashboard so let's go ahead and get into more intermediate metrics for growing brands so your customer retention rate here's an easier way to think about customer retention rate it's the percentage of customers who stick with your brand over time so to calculate it take the number of customers you end with subtract the new customers you gained then divide that by the customers you started with and then multiply it by 100 so if you started with a thousand customers gained 200 new ones and ended with 1100 your retention rate would be 90 percent which would be a pretty good retention rate customer lifetime value so one of my favorite metrics is customer lifetime value and this tells you how much a customer is worth over their lifetime so multiply the average order value uh, by the pre-purchase frequency and the length of time a customer stays with your brand so if a customer spends 50 dollars per order makes four purchases a year and stays with you for three years their clv is 600 dollars. and then going back to that whole customer acquisition cost side of things like if you're able to acquire a customer for 20 30 40 dollars and their lifetime value is 600 and you can really kind of map out that customer journey that's when you can really start having some fun with scaling up your ad campaigns and scaling up your business as a whole marketing efficiency ratio is another one of my favorites it's the one i'm kind of leading with now for most of our clients so this metric shows how efficiently your entire marketing department is converting spend into revenue so to get your mer divide your total revenue by your total marketing spend including including ads, salaries, content, everything, and that's your MEOR. So if you made 200 grand in revenue and spent 40 grand on marketing, your MEOR is five. And yeah, again, that just really helps you get clear on the balance sheet on how much your marketing is contributing to your revenue. So your return on ad spend, your ROAS is probably a, a bit of a common one for people to know, but it is intermediate. It's how much revenue each dollar of ad spend generates. So to calculate it, divide the revenue from ads by the ad spend itself. And yeah, you'll see this on your meta and your uh, TikTok platform. So if you spend five grand, and on ads and you made 20 your ROAS on the ad platforms is four so new customer acquisition costs a little bit different than just CAC in general because it tells you how much you spend to attract brand new customers first-time purchases so divide your total spend on acquiring new customers by the number of new customers acquired 
So if you spend eight grand on marketing and you got 400 new customers, your new customer acquisition cost is $20. Gross profit, you might not learn this one in school, but your gross profit margin tells you what's left after covering the cost of your product. So subtract the cogs uh, from total revenue, divide by revenue and multiply by 100. And that'll give you your, your gross profit margin. So if you made 100 grand in sales and you spent 40 grand on cogs, your gross profit margin is 60%. So your net profit margin is probably the number that everyone really wants to get into it's the percentage of revenue left after all expenses including your operating costs take your net profit divide by total revenue and multiply it by a hundred so if your net profit is twenty thousand from a hundred grand in revenue your net profit margin is twenty percent and once you start getting to the seven figures i think 20 25 percent is like a really nice place to be so now for more advanced metrics for business focus on scaling another one that's coming up constantly is your contribution margin so your contribution margin this metric tells you how much profit Profit is left after covering the cost of your product and your marketing expenses but before operating costs like your rent and your salaries so to calculate it subtract your cost of goods sold and marketing costs from your net sales so if you made 50 grand in net sales you spent 20 grand on your cogs and 10 grand on marketing your contribution margin would be 20,000 so this is a super valuable metric because it shows how much profit your products are contributing to your business after accounting for your marketing especially when that ad spend can fluctuate and then it's it's also before covering your fixed costs. So yeah, it's a really helpful one. So number 16 is your churn rate. So your churn rate measures how many customers stop buying from you. So to get this, divide the number of customers lost by the number of customers at the start, then multiply by 100. So if you started with 500 customers and you lost 50, your churn rate is 10%. And the reason why I put this in the advanced metrics is because it's not something you should really calculate until you've eaten up a large market share. It's always, it's good to keep your eye on it, but like it doesn't really play a big difference until you start getting into the eight and nine figures businesses so 17 is your repeat purchase rate so repeat purchase rate shows your percentage of your customers are coming back for more so divide the number of returning customers by the total number of customers and then multiply that one by 100 so if 100 out of 500 customers make repeat purchases your repeat purchase rate is 20 percent so number 18 is your cpa so your cost per acquisition so this shows how much it costs to acquire a customer across all channels so to calculate it divide your total marketing spend by the total of customers you acquired so if you spend 20 there dollars and you gain 500 customers your cpa is 40 dollars so inventory turnover ratio so finally and uh, that's basically a ratio that measures how quickly you're selling through your stock so divide your cogs by your average inventory and that's what you'll come up with so if your cogs is 100 grand and your average inventory is 50 grand your turnover ratio is two so number 20 your email open rate so email open rate shows how effective your email subject lines are at getting people to open those emails so to calculate it you want to divide the number of opened emails by the total number sent and then multiply it by 100. So if you've sent 10,000 emails and 2,000 were opened, your open rate is 20%. But you probably wanna get that a bit higher. You probably wanna get it closer to 40, 45. So email click-through rate, so that basically measures how many people clicked on links in your emails, the call to action. So to calculate that, you're gonna divide the number of clicks by the numbers of emails sent, then multiply it by 100. So if 300 out of 5,000 email recipients click the link, your CTR is 6%. I wanna remind everybody, a lot of these metrics are on your dashboards, whether it be Shopify or Google Analytics, but I think it's good to just kind of have a glossary of all the ones that I feel are the most important. And again, the way I rank them in regards to beginner, intermediate and advanced, it's really kind of in my head ranking uh, from a revenue standpoint. Like you might say, look, email open rates should be a beginner metric. But in my opinion, from what I've seen anyway, like people that are just starting off aren't actually focusing on email because they don't really have that many customers. So uh, that's kind of the thought process that I went with when I was making that list. So there you have it, 21 metrics to track for e-commerce success. So whether you're just starting out or you're scaling up, these metrics give you a clear picture of how your business is, is performing from a health perspective, an efficiency perspective, and also a profitability perspective. And remember my two favorites were customer lifetime value and your MER, so your marketing efficiency ratio. Uh, these are absolute game changers. We work very closely with these metrics within leading social, and they're really good to look at from a long-term profitability standpoint. If you found the video helpful, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe for more e-commerce growth tips and to help me out and don't forget to download our free ebook five pillars to online business success for an even deeper dive into growing your business so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video